Americans and Brits both speak English, but when it comes to language, we still have our differences. Like the beautiful game of football. No, it's definitely soccer. But do you like my sneakers? You mean trainers. But there is one phrase that we do have in common. And we've heard it over and over. Special relationship. Extraordinarily special relationship. Special relationship. Special relationship. The phrase has been used by leaders from our two countries for more than 70 years to reinforce diplomatic ties. But what does it really mean? It's my duty to place before you. The term special relationship was officially coined by Winston Churchill in 1946, following the Allied victory over Nazi Germany. Churchill said the UK and the US were each other's biggest allies, not least because they shared the same language. The phrase reinforced common cultural, political and economic ties between the two countries as they faced the growing threat of communism. And many of those ties still exist today. When it comes to foreign investment, the UK and the US pour more money into each other's economies than any other country in the world. And they share a workforce too. More than 1.1 million Americans work for British companies in the US, and nearly 1.4 million Britons are directly employed by US affiliates. Now, we know relations between our two countries haven't always been perfect. Let's not forget the whole reason we became the United States. Come on, Elizabeth, that was nearly 300 years ago. Let's move on. All right, all right, let's go back to the 1940s. Close ties between the US and the UK helped lay the groundwork for the creation of NATO, an alliance between several countries that wanted protection from the Soviet Union's growing sphere of influence. Intelligence sharing during this time also became a bond that tied the US and UK together. The countries established the UK-USA Agreement, an alliance that allowed them to share highly classified information. The agreement still exists today. During the Cold War, however, the special relationship was not without its own hiccups. In 1956, the relationship hit a rocky patch during the Suez Crisis, when British Prime Minister Anthony Eden was pressured by US President Dwight Eisenhower into withdrawing the UK's military operation in Egypt. Was it likely to endanger widespread British and international interests? It was. One thing that became clear, the US was the dominant partner in the relationship. Just look at the size of their economies. In the US, GDP is over $19 trillion, while in the UK, it's around $2.5 trillion. And the UK relies on the US as its most important trading partner. It exports around $130 billion worth of goods to the US. That's more than double what it sends to Germany, its second biggest trading partner. So why does the US even need a special relationship with a smaller economy like the UK? Tom? Well, Elizabeth, good relationships aren't just about money. Really? Think of the military and diplomatic ties, not to mention the cultural collaborations between our two nations. I mean, what about Taylor and Burton? Remember them? No, not exactly. But I do remember Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And then there's Maggie and Ron. Margaret Thatcher met her ideological soulmate in Ronald Reagan during the 1980s. They oversaw the end of the Cold War and a joint commitment to free markets, capitalism, and small government. When it comes to military action, the UK and the US have followed one another into conflict around the world. After 9-11, Tony Blair got behind George W. Bush and Britain joined the US in the Iraq war, despite opposition at home. And Barack Obama went the extra mile for David Cameron by publicly backing his anti-Brexit position. And UK is going to be in the back of the queue. We now know how that turned out. Which leaves us with Theresa May and Donald Trump. So far, it's been love-hate between these two. They were cozy at the White House after President Trump's election. But since then, President Trump has gone after the Prime Minister on Twitter, even canceling a scheduled visit here to London, citing the cost and his dislike of the new US Embassy. By playing hard to get, the President could be trying to fulfill his America First agenda. But with Britain's post-Brexit future still unclear, the special relationship could be more important than ever. Hey guys. Tom and Elizabeth here. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out more of our videos over here. And don't forget to subscribe. See you later.